why were why you obviously had a pretty big accident. Uh, well, you, you fucked up. Yeah, yep. I just hit. Yeah, I just fell much. off my bike. Like, so you've taken up mountain biking. Oh, I just did it for a bit of fun. Yeah. Like I don't have a mountain bike. I was using a mate's mountain bike. We were all swapping, and um, I love riding. Like I've got. I've have got, you got footage of it? Uh, I don't have footage of me falling off. I've got footage of me about to fall off, but then, <laughs> then I don't have it of me well, falling. If we can find a photo of the remnants of that or the the uh, what happened after that, that yeah. was. Uh, it, Everyone thought it was pr- really bad. Like, I remember yeah. speaking to your dad and he goes, oh, fuck, it's not good. Yeah. Oh, I think parents like to <laughs> stress about those types. I called my mum and I was like, mum, how's it going? She's like, yeah, good. She's like, what, what have you done? And I was like, nothing, I'm fine. I'm just at the hospital just chilling. I'll be out soon. She's like, what have you done? And I was like, oh, I fell off my bike. And she's like, okay. And I was like, oh. I have what you did. You I, d- what, did what did you do? You can tell us. I broke a couple of ribs. Yeah. Um, so I broke seventh and eighth rib and I fractured um, T2, T3 spinal processes and then I punctured a lung, had a pneumothorax. So you were training at this stage for your Ironman? There was an Ironman event? Yeah, so I was actually competing in the open at that point, getting yep. ready, trying to qualify for the games early and I was also getting ready. I was about five weeks out from uh, Bustleton Ironman, which is something I've always wanted to attempt. Um getting an Ironman done, it looked like a really hard <laughs> task. So I was just like, oh, it sounds cool. It'd be push, it'll push me um, and it'd, it'd give me something to aim for. And then, yeah, we just decided we were going to go for a road ride and we decided to go for a mountain bike instead just to change things up and I like changing things up. It gets us outside, gets us all working together and we're with a group of mates and having some fun. And yeah, just we were all changing bikes, and as we were changing bikes, I, you know, one bike was stiffer, one bike was a bit softer, one bike was this, that, different heights, different lengths, and I just came around a corner, unprepared, probably took it a bit too quick. Um, it was a bit more cushiony, so I overshot the corner, washed out the front wheel, went over the handlebars, and then like hit a tree with my head, and kind of rolled up the tree into my back, and then like there was a branch sticking out that like jabbed me in the back. And then that kind of did the back damage and then, yeah, broke a couple of ribs at the same time. And then, yeah, got my lung with one of the broken ribs and kind of put a little tear in there as well. But to be honest, like, it was fairly painful, but it, like, wasn't. Like, if standing still, it wasn't that much. It was, like, pretty okay. But when they tried to move me, oh, shit, that was painful. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to be moved again. And then it was like, oh, we have to move you. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay, but... It wasn't that bad and from what they told me, as soon as they said that you hadn't done any damage to, you know, the vertebrae surrounding the spinal cord, I was like, cool, it's fine. Then I'm not going to hurt myself anymore. So when can I start training again? And they were just like, oh, you need to heal this. And they did a really good job and and they're obviously wanting to, they've got my best interests at heart, but I really wanted to do this Ironman. And so as soon as I left the hospital after, they had me stay for four days and then once I got cleared for spinal um, I got back at about 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon on the fourth day uh, fifth day sorry and I was like I want to get back on the bike and then Kay was like no you can't get back on the bike and I was like no I really want to and she's like no just give it one more day so I left it another day and on the sixth day I got back on the bike on the trainer and the indoor trainer and started riding and so my thing was, I'm going to try and heal this injury for time. At that point in time, I'd already turned over to plant-based. I'd have been doing it for about a month already. Um, uh, my nutrition was good. I was really, you know, fo- I'm always focused on recovery regardless. I want to get the best out of my performance as much as I possibly can. And that's without turning to illegal drugs or anything that's going to make me unhealthy in the long run. That's just by far the most opposite of what I ever want to do. If I had to sacrifice my health for something, for a gold medal at something, uh, you can take the gold medal and I'll go live my long, happy life. Um, And so I was at home and I was like, I'm going to heal this as fast as I possibly can. I'm going to do everything that I know. I'm going to use every tool in my toolbox to heal this thing. So I was doing things like sleeping extra. I was getting out and earthing regardless of whether it actually did anything or it made me feel good. I was getting sunlight every day, which is proven to increase absolutely like every type of healing process in the body. I was getting down the ocean. I was getting in the cold water. I was getting in the salt. I was getting in the float tank. I was jumping in the sauna, which is really good for heat shock proteins and healing injuries and wounds. I was um, 
doing breath work, I was alkalizing my blood. I was even just picturing my bones healing in the float tank, even just visualizing them healing, whether that works or not. I did it anyway. And I tried to do everything I possibly could to try and heal this thing. And I went back, I was back doing like three and a half hour training sessions, like swim, bike, run sessions in within like 11 days. Like I felt like it was a bit painful, but it wasn't that bad. Um, and it wasn't the bones that were sore. It was the muscles around those areas that had copped it, um, like bruises on my back and stuff. That's what was kind of sore. Like it didn't hurt to swim. It didn't hurt to bike. It only hurt to run a little bit, but just the jolt, lifting? jolting impact. I didn't lift. Yeah. So after that, I didn't lift up to the Ironman. I probably could have, um, but I kind of used that time to really prepare for the Ironman. I, was doing, I wasn't doing a ton of training for it. I was maybe training up to 10 hours a week in that last four weeks. And then prior to that, I was training maybe six to seven hours of triathlon-based training. A, and a, a day? A week. A week for a just week. for just triathlon, and then I was probably doing fifteen to sixteen, seventeen hours of CrossFit training on top. So I was roughly doing around about twenty four, twenty five hours, hours of training, of training a week, training. and then some. And then leading into the game, sometimes you're in the gym from eight until seven, you eight eight a.m. until seven p.m. It's like Holy just shit. depends what you're up to. Um, and Is you're that not, how much they're training. You're not going, you're not doing like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah, like yeah. you might do a three hour block in the morning, you take a break, you might go do a two hour block and then you might go for a 90 minute swim, something like that. So you might be doing six hours of actual work or something like that. Um, but then it fluctuates throughout the year. You need to have your off time and then you need to have your on time. So you're at real high stress and then you're recouped phases. And so doing all of this, sleeping when I was in bed and when I wasn't in, when I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't in bed. Like... I think people would use that time to sit and be still watch and, Netflix. and watch Netflix. And I thought that's the most opposite of what I need right now. I need to get outside. I need to get moving. I need to get, I need to move my lymphatic system around. I need to stretch. I need to mobilize. I need to be out getting fresh air and doing all those things. And so that's what I did. And then after two and a half weeks, I got a two and a half week scan and they had, they couldn't find any more cracks in my vertebrae that all healed. They couldn't find any more, um, breaks in my my ribs my pneumothorax had disappeared um the tear in my lung had pretty much cleared up after seven days and yeah it's incredible yeah and i think that's uh, the, that's probably the way it should be though i feel like that's probably the way most people should heal up i feel like that's the norm that's like if we were to just to treat ourselves um you know take into consideration it depends how fast you want to heal like i wanted to heal real quick so i was determined was that five weeks I competed yep. after five weeks, um, so it was f- in an Ironman. Yeah, yeah. So I did the Ironman. So that's uh, so that's obviously for people that don't know, it's like a nine-hour event. Oh, what's yeah. What's the fastest person doing? Fastest hour? in the world uh, is around seven hours and forty-five minutes. And what is it? It's a hundred. I think it's a hundred and twenty k. But how's it start? So it starts off with a three point eight k swim, open water swim. Oh my god! I don't think I could do three point eight k's. So that took a that took me, and I'm like not the fastest swimmer in the world, but I'm not the worst either. It took me an hour and three minutes. Um, then coming off that, we went go into a hundred and eighty k bike ride, and that took five hours and four minutes for me. Yeah. And then you do a marathon after that, and so that took me four hours. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, good on you. So what do you do it in? So you were, oh, you wanted nine minutes. You wanted nine hours. I wanted know. under 10. Uh, like under. I said, I would have been absolutely stoked with under 10 hours. Yeah. And I did 10 hours and 14 minutes. So that's unreal. So to qualify for the Australian Ironman circuit, which you don't want to do. Is no, so like getting to Kona, gonna... like World Series, yeah. you'd probably have to place, you'd probably have to come probably sub nine, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm not a, I don't know the ins and outs of triathlon that much. I just intrigues me. I really just enjoy swim bike So you run. just thought, oh, just, okay, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, no, it was really... It's pretty, I mean, I gotta, you got to laugh about it. I mean, the, yeah. the average person, I, I don't think, could even contemplate it. A fit person can't even really contemplate it. Well, I really, I really think that in any given situation, I think if there was, if I was with somebody on the course or, you know, I think I could encourage someone to get one done regardless of their... What, I, reckon I, I reckon I could get you to do one, put it that way. I reckon if, you know, push comes to shove, we would we would backstroke, breaststroke, 
swim that 3.8 k's and once i got you on the bike it'd just be ticking over the get bike it. the run would be the challenge and then if you need to walk a bit you walk a bit that's fine oh, it's, it's just unbelievable and to actually have that um recovery time is is full on yeah i, th- I think um it just goes to show that do you think that the mind hmm? like i mean you did a lot of other things but hmm. do you think the mind is a crucial component big player yeah totally of course i think the thoughts that you think also play with your body's chemistry like if you've always got you know down depressive thoughts constantly that obviously plays a toll on the rest of your body and the reaction that you have from that you know that snowballs into other things too whereas if you can have a a brighter outlook on a lot of things and be happier and release endorphins and do all those types of things more regularly that's only going to have a positive impact